Fest. I actually moved to New York in 1988, so it was the first year of New Fest. And um, I was thinking today about what the word vision meant, because I had to speak about it, so I thought I should think about it. And the word that came to my mind was resistance. Um, and I think about 1988, which was uh, when I moved here, and I arrived in New York at a very particular time in the history of this city, and I got very involved in um, ACT UP, an organization which was created around the concept of resistance. I also started making films, including two shorts, uh, Vaudeville and Lady, and then, um, you know, New York was a very interesting time then. It was a time in which the city was both dying and very, very much alive. Uh, as artists, we felt it was our right and our responsibility to be counter forces against the mainstream and against the epidemic. Soon after I came to New York, I began working on my first feature, which was called The Delta. And it was about a teenager who was closeted in Memphis, which is where I grew up. And I went back to that city and I made a film that, I, that when I think about it and when I thought about it today, I realized I was creating images that I was too scared to say. I was showing things that somehow I didn't yet have the voice to speak about in my own life. So already, cinema was for me a place of freedom, and it was a place of, of fighting against repression, both culturally and internally. Um, what was true, and, and I'm, I'm, I'm not ashamed to say this, but I think it's interesting, perhaps should be the word, is that for the next 15 years after the Delta, none of my films had a gay character in them. And I've thought a lot about why that is true. My films, you could still say they were queer films, because they were made by me, who was certainly queer. And yet they were not gay films in the extent, well, they might have been gay films, what do I say? They were not telling gay stories, and they were not telling my story. I love those films. They were very much personal representations of the things that I was interested in. But I think it's very interesting why I closeted myself with the stories that I chose to tell. And I have to say that I was part of a generation which has done so. And if you look at the culture, there are many, many reasons why, and I won't go into it forever, but let's just start to say that there is very little possibility for a sustained career as someone who wants to tell stories about LGBT lives. There's very few models that we can look at that says that that's possible, and capitalism also does not say it's possible. So there is resistance, both internal and cultural. For me, the turning point, and the reason I'm standing here, I think, came in 2010, when a lot of different things happened in my life, which also made it possible for me, for the very first time, to, to, um, to be ready to, to start again. And I think the film that was the transition was a short film I made in 2010 called Last Address. That film is about, um, it's an eight minute film about a group of New York City artists who died of AIDS. And in making that film, I really had to look at those men and women and try to understand where they came from and what kind of work they were making, which took me back to the 80s, and it took me back to the 70s, and it took me back to the New York, which I think um, I had lost touch with. Personally, I was also at a very different place. Um, I was at a time in my life when for the first time, and I think I'm not alone in a generation in saying this was very hard won, I liked myself. And that really gave me the place in which I could consider telling stories about my own life because I wasn't in hiding anymore. Um, but I was also encountering through Last Address the work of artists like David Vornerovich and Derek Jarman and Jack Smith all who had died of AIDS in New York, but while they were here, created incredible work, which was, in itself, resistant. It was contrary. Work at that point, in the city at that time, was for me a place in which value meant something very different than what it, what it might be considered today. Value could be a term that artists felt that they uh, shared, because, not because they were accept, accepted economically or otherwise, but because they created work that was meaningful and resistant. It was also at this time that I founded in 2010 with Adam Barrett, who's in the back and is a participant of both Outfest and Newfest and a great filmmaker himself. We started Queer Art Film at the IFC Center. 
and I, and I learned that the other tool that makes vision possible was community. It was something you would think I would have learned during ACT UP days, but like so many, that collective power was harder to hold on to than we had hoped. We lost it in a lot of ways. When ACT UP ended and the world became different, and it wasn't, the end, it wasn't ACT UP, it's too hard to figure out. Go watch How to Survive a Plague. That'll tell that story in a good way. But I think for many of us, and myself certainly, I didn't know how to connect to other people. And I began to isolate, and my life and the world got smaller. With Queer Art Film, and now Queer Art Mentorship, and I'm actually in the process of beginning a, a, a nonprofit, which will house both those organizations called Queer Art, um, I re-entered the world. And it was actually, very specifically, that foundation that community building which allowed me to make Keep the Lights On. 450 people got involved in making that film. Which allowed me to make Love is Strange, which was funded by 25 people, 21 of which are re retired lesbian businesswomen. Who saw in my film something that they could see bits of themselves in and saw how precious that was. Hmm. What I have learned over the last 25 years and what I need to remember today every day, really, is that queer vision doesn't come with making people feel comfortable or from accepting what is. That's kind of the opposite of what my job is as an artist and any of our jobs is. It's to make people feel a little uncomfortable and perhaps in doing so, let people see bits of themselves. But I have to say, moments like this, uh, with the embrace that comes when you walk into a theater and you know a hundred faces, and 50 of them congratulate you and pat you on the back and make you feel like you're a part of something and part of a community, it makes it a little easier. Uh, and it's very, very meaningful to me. So thank you. Enjoy this wonderful movie, which is by my dear friend, Kareem Anus, who also moved here in, 19, in the 80s. And enjoy this great festival. Thank you.